Hi, I'm Patrick Doyle, and that's the Columbarium. I'm here in San Francisco. The Columbarium is the last standing structure of the Oddfellow Cemetery. The remains of an estimated 65,000 can be found inside, but they only occupy a mere 7,500 individual niches. How could this be? Back when the old timers were digging up the graves and moving the body south, the ashes of 10 or more people were dumped into a single urn. This fact could be why so many people claim to see shadows and hear voices inside. Now, I personally never have in all my visits here. I just think it's a wonderful example of architectural art for the afterlife. It's my belief that you must first have an understanding of how your body works in this life before you can understand what's going on in the afterlife. Let's start with the eyes. To put it simply, the world around us is a foreign language to our five senses, and the brain is the interpreter. But sometimes it screws up the translation, causing us to see things. When it's dark, the iris dilates, allowing the maximum amount of light to enter. The back of the eye is made up of a million rods, which pick up light, and cones, which distinguish a thousand shades of color. The majority of these cells are located directly opposite the lens, giving us the greatest focus and clarity in the direct line of sight. Light which enters the sides of the eye strike the wall where there are fewer rods and cones, meaning less color and shape information is sent to the brain. Our peripheral vision strength is detecting movement. It warns us of possible dangers coming at us from the sides. So if a dark object moves beside us in another room, the brain detects a possible threat and orders the eye to turn towards it. Once the eye is focused on the object, the brain fills in the details, transforming a blurry mass into a friend in a blue shirt, or a plant, or just a shadow. And because the majority of our eye only transmits partial information to the brain, it can sometimes fill in the blanks incorrectly, taking a shadow or a combination of objects and showing you something that you want or are hoping to see, especially if your mind is set on seeing one thing, like a ghost. Our brains are wired to distinguish faces and figures and patterns and shadows. Some have come to call this matrixing, but this is a made-up word which simply means you're seeing things that really aren't there. And we need to start calling it for what it really is. In short, the ability to see faces is part of our body's self-preservation system. It allows us to recognize familiar shapes and piece together human features and objects in low light or during stressful moments. But as amazing as this ability is, it's also causing false sightings, especially when sitting in a dark room hunting for ghosts or examining photos for proof of a haunting. Here are a few examples of seeing what's not really there. This first one I took while walking down the street in Portland. See, at first, I have to admit, it does look like a face in the window. But as I got closer and viewed the object at a different angle, I saw that my would-be ghost was actually a plant. Here's a photo I took while hiking in Bigfoot country. The shadow could be construed as a humanoid figure if you're walking past it real quickly. But upon closer inspection, I found that it was actually the shadow of a nearby dead tree. Now in the back of this old barn, the uh, shadows in the back do look like a figure or two, but I just have to chalk this one up to pixelation in the photograph that my brain is turning into a ghostly figure. And this last photo I shared with you last episode, and I explained the figure in the water, but I also received a few emails from people who saw a figure standing under the trees. Now, I don't know which trees or where in the photograph to point you to. But this is just a great example of people are going to see what they want to see if they believe the place is haunted and they're looking with a wanting eye. Website galleries and inboxes are teeming with videos and photos that could be dismissed as tricks of the eye. In no way are these hoaxes, but they should be addressed. On the topic of a hoax, or a possible hoax, I'd like to discuss security videos. Back before I became a writer, I used to install security systems. And it's this evidence captured on video surveillance that I want to talk about today. The two videos come to mind. In the first, a little green bug was crawling all around a gas station camera. As they had fooled the whole town, it was even on the news. 
And in the second, a ghostly figure of a woman was seen pacing around a police impoundment lot after she was killed in a car accident. Now, again, I'm not calling these hoaxes, but after watching them and knowing what I know about security systems and computers, I figured out a way that someone could recreate a video similar to these and post it on the web as actual evidence. So the average security camera records at one frame per second. And knowing this, I will only need to take five still photographs to create a 10 to 15 second video clip. And my only prop will be a white sheet. All right, here are five photos. I'm gonna got one, which I call the index photo. It's just the hallway. And these four with me walking by the camera with the sheet on. And we're going to start with the index photo and one of the sheet photos. And all we're going to do is just drag on over. And since the camera didn't move, uh, it's going to line up perfectly there. And then all we have to do is take the erase tool and uh, take out the shadow of me walking past and my legs. And then we're just going to blur it a little bit more to add effect. And then just change the opacity down to make it a more convincing say ghost and that's good and then we're gonna do this to all four photographs turn them black and white and then that will give us the uh, the five images that we need to create a 10 second video and this is what that final video will look like Here's another example using that same technique. Now that's just one hoax I got to throw together in 10 minutes. Decide for yourself if what you see is real or fake. As for matrixing, we just need to understand more about how our eye works, how our brain interprets the signal. And more importantly, just take a little extra time to go over those videos and photo evidence with a, a closer eye, with more focus, and intense scrutiny. Until next time, just ask yourself, did it really happen? Did I just want it to happen? Or did someone make it happen? Happy haunting. On the next Haunted Hoax, Thermal Imaging, Aliens, Ghosts, EVPs, Residual Haunting, Bigfoot. I'm asking 13 questions without answers. I just want to take a moment and thank all of you for supporting Haunted Hoax, as well as my book series, Edgar Font's Hunt for a House to Haunt. And just want to let you know more episodes are coming, and I'll be talking on topics like EVPs, uh, tricks with fishing line, and more on orbs. As for my Edgar Font series, um, book three, The Flint Island Treehouse, is now available. And you can, you can learn more about it and the entire series at edgarfont.com, and you can pick them up at amazon.com, or just ask for them at your local bookseller. And again, thanks for everything and I'll talk with you more later.